Hello everybody and welcome to my YouTube channel Dream of Crafts. My name is Deanna and today we're going to be doing tutorial number two for my Dreamland suitcase album. And we're going to start with the front because I need to get my buckles on this before we continue. So what I've done is I've taken the main page for the Dreamland and I have cut it down to nine and three eighths wide by ten and three eighths inch high. I'm going to use this as my front cover because I have taken the other sheet that's available in the collection and I've cut it all apart into the um, specific pieces. As you can see here, you have all these specific pieces. But I did like that star background, so I wanted to keep that. And although I only had two of those sheets, because that's what came in the thing, I decided to sacrifice one so I could have that background for my back, just like that's in the original. In addition to cutting these all apart, all except for the big centerpiece, I've backed them all with cardstock, or I mean chipboard. Uh, this is medium weight chipboard. And when I cut my chipboard to fit each piece. I then distress the edges with um, with Mermaid Lagoon. So I would just go along and, and distress the edges so that it all coordinates when you um, put your papers on. So that's what I did with those. So those are already in the sequence that they're supposed to be in. For me to do my cover. Now because the cover is smaller that's why I cut everything apart so I can rearrange it the way I need to to fit it all on the front of my album. So we're going to go ahead and get started with this and I have marked my album for up so I know that I haven't turned it around accidentally and put it upside down. And we're going to go ahead and put our glue on here. Now I did um, smudge my edges with of this piece with the Mermaid Lagoon also. Here we go. So I have got my Things good. We'll see how far we get, but I think we'll be able to easily get, I'm hoping we'll easily be able to get everything I've got prepped for today's video. Here we go. And I am using just my art glitter glue and the bottle is looking pretty nasty because it's an old bottle. I just keep refilling it. All right, okay, make sure this is up. Now I'm just leaving like a sixteenth of an inch edge on my decorative cardstock here for my decorative cardstock. You might hear that tractor moving around outside. There's actually a forklift. They're picking squash in the field right next to my house so it can be a bit noisy so they are picking the squash and that's what you're hearing so i apologize for that little bit of noise but you know, farming does not stop for anybody they gotta get it off the fields when it's ready and before it rains and all that kind of stuff all right so now i'm going to come in with my other pieces and I am going to try to center this the best I can. Let's see here, what do we got? Okay, about an inch there. And about an inch there. Three inch of an inch. Okay, so I can go over just a little bit. So I'm just going to kind of eyeball it. This one I'm going to glue on flat. And then the other pieces will have more dimension. Go 
hope everybody's having a, a good day today. Kind of quiet around here today, other than the tractor, or the forklift, I should say. That looks about right. Looks pretty good. And they pick all those squash by hand. First they come in and they have big nippers and they walk through and they use the nippers to cut the squash off the vine. And then they, with the pork lip, they bring in the big crates and then they use smaller, kind of like laundry type baskets to um, start filling it. And then they go. All right, so I'm going to bring this one in a little bit like that. So each one is going to be a little further in than it would be if it was on the sheet because the sheet is 12 by 12. So I'm going to allow just a little bit of blue edge to show there. And we're going to go ahead and Down. Go. And of course, I didn't uh, prearrange this. I mean, I had an idea in my head, but I couldn't pre-build it because I only had the one set of paper. So we're just kind of winging it here, which is fine, right? Go ahead and do this on the other side. So sometimes we have to pre-decorate in order to keep moving with the other things we got to get done. So again, just a little edge of blue there. Lining those edges up. There we go. I hear the geese flying overhead. And then we have the two longer ones. And these will probably have a little bit more room here. Almost blocking my moon there. I have a little bit more room at the bottom than I do at the top, but that's all right, I guess. Well, that's all right. I might be able to get a little word sticker or something along the bottom. You'll we'll have to see. I'm not sure what other decorations I'm going to do to the... Uh, book. Not sure. See these. I'm going to, boy, if I use those, they're going to cover that. I might only use Hmm. Let me see. These corners are going to take up most of those words, so I might avoid the corners for right now. Maybe use the two bottom ones and not the tops. Let's see here. Let's go ahead and use the two bottom ones. No, we're not. We're just going to, we're going to save these for something. I'll move those, put those on the back or something. We're going to leave this like this for right now. I wish I would have had that a little bit lower, but that's all right. We'll work with it. Apparently I was more worried about the right and the left side and didn't worry. 
should pay attention to my top and bottom, but it's going to look nice. Either way. We'll figure out some other decorations to put on those corners. I did notice there is, in the papers, there's a lot of the uh, sunflowers. So I thought we'd bring in some handmade sunflowers. I thought that would be pretty. All right, so that's our cover. And we're going to save these, and we'll put those maybe on the back. But there's just, they're too big. So maybe if I find some smaller ones, we can add those there. There might be some smaller ones in the stickers that we can add there later. But right now, this will get us to where we can put our buckles on. So I have grabbed two Tim Holtz belt buckles. And we're going to, they also come with their little um, brads. So we're going to figure out where we want these. I'm thinking like there, there. Yeah. I'll grab my ruler. I'm going to line my ruler up. Let's see here. I want to do that. Let's figure out where we want one and then bring the other one in to match. So this is, let's do three inches. Three inches up. Three inches in. Okay, so. Let's bring this three inches in from the edge of my album here. So I'm going to make a little mark right there that I can see. And then three inches up to the edge of my album. And I can see my little mark there. My little mark is there. So here is my three inches in, three inches up mark right there. And I can make it a little darker because I'm going to bring in my punch. So let's do the same thing. Three inches from the edge of my album. I can actually kind of line up with that dot there maybe a little bit. So three inches there. And then three inches in would be my mark. Let me see here. Right. Dang, I can't even see my other pencil mark. Oh, right there. <laughs> I lost my other pencil mark. Oh, right there. Okay. So let's try again. Three inches. All right. Three inches right there. And three inches. Okay, so right here. So right there. All right, let's go ahead and bring in the punch. Punch our holes. And all right. I'm going to use the smallest of my punches here and my buckles a second. Come in. And I got a because this book is so long I'm not gonna be able to lift it up to show you but I'm just that's the nice thing about this punch is it can go way in there and it's a we are memory keepers crop I think it's a 
Pop a tile, maybe. All right, so now I'm going to come in this other one. And find that one. And I'm just going directly over top of that uh, area there. This punches them good. So, I mean, I this hole there, see? And the hole there and the hole there. Let's go ahead and put our buckles on. The reason we got to get these buckles on now is because we can't decorate the front until our buckles are on, or I mean the inside, because with our, with our buckles on. Because can't put our paper down. All right. Now what we're going to use for, um, I looked at the fake leather I have, I'm, that makes good, uh, and I'm just opening up my brads there, all right, so there, that swivels good, yeah, that looks good, okay, all right, so I looked at this, but I only had this in pink. This is fake leather. It's a uh, from Hobby Lobby. It runs four ninety nine for the uh, what is it twenty four inches by eight inches. So, and I have used this for um, buckles before. It works nice, but it's just not the right color. So, I decided to go with what is called Craft Tux. Now, Craft Tux is a material that um, you can use like fabric. You can sew it, you can wash it, but it is a paper. So it's real heavy, very flexible. So what I've done is cut four half inch strips. I did I cut four? No, I need two. Must be getting ready for my next book. <laughs> so I'm gonna set two aside. So I'm got uh, those and then I took my Mermaid Lagoon Distressed Oxide and I just inked both edges okay so that is what's going to run in our buckle and I actually got to face this way okay and then they'll get the holes so I could have set those back further I guess right I think we'll be all right. So these are, like I said, Tim Holtz buckles, which are really nice buckles. So we'll be able to run those in. So we can punch holes in these when we're ready for them, but that's they're going to be attached to the back side. So these are going to come like this. All right. So this is going to. Oh, I might have to move that. Hope oh, I'm going to going to have to move those back further. All right. I didn't account for my flip coming over. All right, so let's move these back here. Let's move them back. And we'll just decorate something on there to cover that hole up. This is this is what happens when you don't uh, when you're not planning line. So I'm gonna go up again three inches in and let's see how far we are. Let's see where this lands now. Let me see. So, yeah, I think we're good there. Okay. I think we're good there. So let's just double check that. Put it. Boy, it just disappears so dang fast. All right. So let's put a buckle there. So I'm going to actually make a nice dent there so I could see that. All right. That is about five. Five in. Five in, three up. Five in, three up. There we go. Five in, three up. 
five in. So right in here. Should put a pencil line there. Okay. Three. Okay, so there's my pencil line. All right, let's try again. Let's bring back in the chomper. And we're going to put that right on that little. What's in my way here? I feel like I got something in the way, but I guess I don't. Be like I do, but I guess I don't. Okay. Let's double check that. Five in. Three up. Move these. Okay. Double check this one. Like I said, we'll cover up those holes. So you're going to go five in, three up. And it wouldn't matter if it wasn't for that little flip there. So five in, three. There we go. All right. Just making sure. Just making sure. Line up that little there we go. All right, let's try again. So we're gonna face this way. Hopefully I got it right this time. <laughs> All right. Not so tight. These little buckles they come in I think three different colors, like uh Bronze, gold, and the, and the silver here. There we go. All right, let's try it now. There we go. That's better. See? And then we'll just cover those up with something. I'll figure something out to cover those up. All right. Okay. And then the buckles, these will come up. Up from the back. And around and in here just like that okay so we will add those i think we probably could add those now i guess it's about that far bring this in I think I'd like that. Okay. Down and around. So I think I want it to be on the outside there, there, and on the inside here. All right. So three inches up. Three inches up here. So I'm just going to make a line. Three inches down here. Make another line. And then I just will center this on there like that. And we'll attach those before we add our back piece. Okay? All right. So we're good to go there and lay those back down. Get them out of the way. They will actually face this direction when we get them, but they're fine right now. All right. Nice and flat. I'm going to flatten out. Uh, that Craft Text, when I bought it, I bought it from Walmart. They had the best price at the time, but I've had it for years. And it comes, I think, in four different colors that the original company and it was white, gray, black, and a like a natural color. 
And uh, I see now that there's quite a few people on Etsy who um, offer uh, offer it. They must dye it themselves or something because it's offered in different colors. For our next piece, I want to cover this area right here with a piece that is 9 and 15 sixteenths by 8 and a half wide. I'm just going to cover that because my next piece you'll be able to see down on there and I want it to show white. I don't want it to show um, the back of the chipboard there. So we're just going to go ahead and add this. I think I'm going to quick put on a couple pieces of tape over top of these brads to kind of hold those in place. Okay, just like that. Just to help hold those in place a little bit. And then we'll give an extra little dab of glue right there. Oop, I just dropped my pen. Right, so let me get this on here first before my glue dries up anymore. And we're just gonna boy, oh boy. And then our decorative card stock that I chose in. <laughs> my pen is gone. My pen is gone. Let me see here. Gotta cover that. I'll have dried out glue. But I have to remember to find that one so I don't step on it. Because that would suck. This is my office type supplies <laughs> that I have handy. All right. So this piece is from the, just the regular papers. So the patterns and solids. This is from patterns and solids. And this is cut at... Ten and a half, ten and a quarter high by nine and a quarter wide, and that's going to go right on here. Now, what I've done here is I've cut a little place for a pocket. This die, I know that other companies make them. This one is from AliExpress. So what you do is, and it comes. This one came in four different sizes, so you got bigger. I used the smallest one. That came with it and I want to say it was like $14 with the shipping I ordered this back in like April March and it just got here yesterday so it cuts out this piece here but then it also cuts out the slot that you need in your paper so it cut out this so what I did was I came in and I came in, uh, what did I come in? Three quarters of an inch from my edge. And then down one and a half inches. And I made a mark where I wanted it. And then I cut the slot out. Then this is the decorative piece that this cuts out. So I cut out two of those and ink those with dried marigold, uh, which is also a, oh, here it is. I'm like, where'd it go? 
Uh, so I inked it with dried marigold, distressed oxide. And then we're going to glue that on there. On the back, I took just a strip of white cardstock and I ran that through with this slot cutter so that I could create more stability on the back side here. Um, because I want that nice and strong. If they're going to be bringing in and out tag, then I wanted that nice and strong. <laughs> buckles love it. So we're going to go ahead and glue this one on. I pre-glued that one. In addition to this, I have cut down four pieces of one inch wide cardstock and scored it at a half inch and five inches long to create the sides for my pocket. So I'm just going to line this up exactly with that just to create more stability there. I'm going to move off the side here so I can flatten that out. I don't want to be pressing on that cover too much with that other stuff down there. Okay. So I pre-glued two down here. I've got the other two ready to go. So we'll just go ahead and do those a second. Let me close that, bring this in here so you can see what I'm doing good. All right, so I'm just going to Put my glue on the one half there. And I am going to try to keep this straight. So I will just kind of line my ruler up along the edge there. And I'm going to bring it right underneath that slot. And right along the ruler there. There we go. Perfect. What we got? Looks pretty good. Maybe I'll slide it over just a little bit. Not the paper. <laughs> Don't slide the paper over. Three quarters of an inch. Okay. Right. So I'm going to put some glue back down underneath there. Just want to make sure that that's straight there. There we go. So it's three quarters of an inch at the top. Let's make sure it's three quarters of an inch at the bottom. There we go. That'll work. Perfect. All right. Doesn't have to be exact, exact because the tag won't be that wide anyway, but try to keep it straight. And of course, our little Things are going to face in. I'm just going to eyeball this one here. Line up along the edge. There we go. Okay. That looks pretty good. All right. And that will help our tag slide in and out. Nicely. I've got some tape on here. And just underneath these. I didn't want to put the tape too close to where those are going to be because I don't want the tag grabbing onto tape. All right. Oh, right. Here we go. Let's open this back up here. Grab this. So this is going to ride right along in there. I'm going to center this. So let's drop some glue on here. And I want... And the reason I've got tape on there is to help hold until the glue dries. All right. I can go in between here. And I want to roll of glue right underneath where this pocket's going to be. I don't want any glue in there. I can put glue on my tabs. But I gotta keep that pocket open. Okay. And all down along here. Get our glue. And we got another thing coming on here too. That we'll make here in a second. Okay, leaving our pockets open. 
Oops, let me get a little bit there, a little bit there. There we go. All right. So let's go ahead and get this on there. Now this is going to allow about an eighth of an inch in the top and the bottom. Okay, I'm going to come in from... Actually, a little more than an eighth. There we go. All right, so I'm going to get those tabs down there. You have to rub a little bit hard because you got those different levels with those tabs in there. And I've just got my hand underneath here so I'm not pressing on that metal and making dents in my paper. There we go. Now I want to get that down in there good. Underneath there. And I figured I'd put those out. I mean, you could just lay glue in there, but then you end up with so tight. So that's why I wanted to put the, the hinges in there. It allows just a little bit more room for your tags to move in. Let me grab a scrap here and I'll show you. So then this can tag can have room to move in and out without stressing. Okay, so let's go ahead and add our other decorative element there. I was very pleased with these. I mean, I waited forever for these dies, but I was very pleased with the quality. I'd, I mean, I thought, okay, you just never know. I had a really nice bee die that I got from. And sometimes it's just the malfunction of the machine that's creating it. But it, the bee die cut out everything but one little section of the wing, which was really delicate. So... It's like, well, I waited months for this to get here now. I mean, normally it was like 30 days, but now it's like, it's like months. It's not no longer one month. It's months and months and months. So, but hey, whoops, dang. And then this is going to slide right over top of that. Now, I understand that not everybody has this product or one like it. And you can take your punch and make a little hole on each end, like make a mark, figure out the length or the width of your, what you want for your tag. Say you want it four inches. So make a little mark coming down however far you want on your paper. Make a little pencil mark, pencil mark. Punch a little hole. And then bring your ruler in with an exacto blade and go from um, dot to dot, creating a slot for yourself. And uh, I've done that before. Okay, so we got those two nice tags. Now, the next part for this is going to be this little element here that's going to open up. And it's one of those um, twist and flip cards, but I'm using it as a, a photo element so that they can put, she can put it in. Like I told you, this is for my great niece. So I thought she would get a little kick out of that. In addition to that, this has a little pocket on the back too. So this idea I got from uh, Sincerely, Sincerely, uh, I think it's Rena. It's R I N A. So sincerely, Rena. And she had said that um, a couple of women from her group had uh, figured out the measurements for the little bit larger flip. And um, so she did a tutorial on it. So this is where I got it from. Uh, she, I don't know who the women are that figured it out, but I want to give her credit because I found it on her website i have done other flips in the past but for this larger one that's where i got the idea from was uh, i want to say rena so sincerely rena 
on YouTube and I followed her tutorial. So I'm going to go ahead and construct one with you and I'll glue this one down first so it has time to dry before we move on and then we will do one of these twist flip cards in this size also. Okay. That way you don't have to go and find her website if you don't want to. Um, and you can just follow along with the tutorial I give. But if you want to, please go visit her site and, and watch hers too. But sometimes when I'm doing a project, I don't want to run and look all over at different sites to try to find out how to do something. I just, you, you're doing the tutorial, just show me, okay? So, I don't know if everybody feels that way, but that's just sometimes how I feel. So, I'm just going to eyeball this just like that. And again, there's a small amount of tape on the back of this, and that is so that um, I guess the glue can hold on to going to press on that from this side. Gives the glue something to, or the tape will grip until my glue dries. All right. So, let's go ahead and let that sit up. See, that makes a nice layout on there. While we go ahead and i show you how I did it. So, what you're going to need is this of course, you're going to need a scoreboard and a thing. So you are going to cut one piece 12 inches long by 6 inches wide. And I'm going to move you out here so you can get a better view. There we go. So 12 inches long by 6 inches wide. And she suggests to make sure that your paper is 12 inches long. Um before you cut uh, because sometimes the paper will be just a little bit longer than 12 inches so so 12 inches long by 6 inches wide on the 12 inch edge you're going to score at 6 inches now in addition to that so this is I've got this marked as my top so on this bottom panel here which it doesn't it matter but when this closes then this would be your bottom, okay? And it will actually face this way. But for all intents and purposes right now, this is textured cardstock. I got my textured side up, and I've got my writing on the top there. So if you want a pocket, because this, this one she added a pocket to. If you want to add a pocket like I did, and she did, then you're going to need another piece, 7 inches, by six inches. Now you are going to score on the seven inch side a half inch flip and a half inch. This will give you your pocket that will cover that whole six inch square. Now this pocket, so these hinges on this pocket are going to be up and down like this. So they're going to be top and bottom. Okay, so this is going to go like this. If you want, if you want your pocket to pull out from the, your tag to pull out from the left side of your pocket, you're going to make a mark three inches in, so three inches down on your right side. So I just came in here, made a mark with at three inches. That is for a tag that pulls out of the left. If you want your tag to pull out of the right side, then you're going to make your 3-inch mark on the left side. So it's just opposite of what you think. Okay? And in mine, my tag pulls out from the left, so I made a mark on my right side. Now, why I made a mark is because I'm going to come in with my, uh, this, what size is this? one and a half inch circle punch and I am going to try to center that and make a little thumb hole there so that little pencil mark kind of helps me so you can do it here if you want so let's go ahead and do it here 
So I'm on my right side, three inches down, because it's a six inch part. And I'm going to bring that in, and I'm just going to kind of eyeball that the center. And that creates just a little thumb spot for my tag to stick out of. Okay. Then you're going to glue on your pocket. You can do this. Um, you can do this part last if you want, but it's easier to cut that thumb hole. She did not. I don't think she did that. I think her tag pocket was just a regular tag pocket. But I thought it'd be easier to get your tag out if you had a little thumb spot there. So that's why I did that. So now we're just going to glue this on here, just like a sew, just like that, okay? Oops, and don't forget to add glue to the back side of your pocket. So I'm going to come back in here and I'm going to drop some glue right in here. There we go. There we go. So now we have our pocket. Right. Just like that. Okay. So we will get a good size tag in there. All right. So to this, we also need one piece that is four inches wide by 10 inches high. You're going to score it at two inches. Okay. Score it two, flip it on the 10 inch side. You're going to mark it at three inches and seven inches. Flip it, mark at three inches and seven inches. Go ahead and grab your trimmer. And you're going to line Lost my there it is. <laughs> I'm gonna hang right on to that. One of these days I'm gonna take the time to make myself a little dangle for that. So you're going to align. Oh, we don't need this. <laughs> no, we're not gonna cut it. What are you thinking? We need the scoreboard. Goodness gracious, I almost cut it. All right, scoreboard. You're gonna line up your mark on one side with the mark on the other side. So you're gonna, it's gonna create that X you need. So you're gonna score, and you're gonna flip, and you're gonna mark this one to that one. So I got my mark here, my mark there. And make that X, okay? So then you can go ahead and just kind of fold and burnish. Hold and burnish, and I already burnished my other one, my center one. And so then what this does is it folds in like that, okay? So again, see, it's almost like a little tent there. And you're just going to kind of pinch these together and bring them in, okay? Just like that. And then we're going to just kind of reinforce that burnish. All right. Well, there we go. Our last piece is four and a half inches wide by 12 inches high. You are going to score at three inches, six inches, and nine inches. Okay. We want to make a W shape with this. So we're going to take this and we're going to fold this in half and burnish. Then you're going to take the right side here and you're going to fold it back over to your left and burnish. Flip this, fold this half to your right and burnish and that creates a W shape. Okay. All right. So that is the part that flips up. Move this aside. All right. Let's bring this back in. We're going to take our little, looks like a house to me, and we're going to mark a center mark, which is 
three inches. So right there. We want to avoid our score line just by a little bit. So we're going to come in and we're going to glue just the top roof of our house. I'm going to call it. Onto our cardstock, onto our base there. There we go. So we know where our center is, and I'm going to stay just a tiny bit below that and make it look like it's even here. Looks pretty good. Give it a good press. Let me flip this over a second and give it a press from this side. You can use tape, tape and glue. Now we're going to do this side of our roof with some glue or tape. All right. And all we have to do is fold this closed. Okay, just like that. Okay. Like that. Okay, now we're going to open this and flatten it out. Okay. We're going to try to flatten it out. There we go. All right. We're going to take this and we're going to have our, our W and we're going to fold the two centers in and we're going to line that up right with the top part of this and along the sides here. I'm just going to make a pencil mark on the top right. So top right. And I'm going to make a pencil mark on the left bottom. Okay. We're going to add glue just to that top right square. So we're not going to, we're not going to add any glue there. Okay. Just this square. Or tape if you want to tape that. All right, I'm just going to fold this open and press it. Okay, same thing here. I'm going to just add just to that left bottom square. Okay, and then we're going to open. All right, dry. Okay. Then we're going to get our card to start. Going back, okay, see, and we're going to have to help it a little bit the first couple of times. It's going to go twist this way here, just to make sure. And then I just go in there and you can see my card sticking up there just a little bit. So that is it. That is your card. See, and like I said, the few first times you you might have to help it out. And then as this is a little more flimsy, but once you add your decorative card stock and stuff, it will get um, a little more full. Now I added my decorative card stock inside of my card before I laid this down, but. If you want, you can just go half, but I want it. So I laid mine down before I put my flip system in. Okay. All right. Just like that. And like I said, it will stiffen up once you add your decorative card stock. So that's how you make your six inch by six inch twist and flip card. All right. Oops. And then I added another, this was a scrap piece two inches wide by eight inches high and I scored this at four and a quarter and four and three eighths to create a little gusset there okay and then I glued this down to the back I used my little chomper here my crocodile corner chomper and this is the green handle one to uh, give a decorative corner there. Come in and I just 
line that up about in the center there you can measure it if you want avoiding that one and then I added magnet there the magnet there there we go so just like that okay so that is the twist and flip card let's go ahead and bring our book back in and continue on let's see what else we can get done all right we should be pretty dry here now let's give it a check get this stuff out of my way that i don't need all right so let's go ahead and give this a a check so there's the magnet and then the twist and flip card as you can see my cardstock i put my decorative cardstock down first you can see the little um cut out for my tag there we go so that is the front cover for this side i have cut another piece ten and a quarter inches high by four and a quarter inches wide just to cover this here okay so we're going to go ahead and do that uh, maybe you put a couple pieces of tape on there just to help hold it okay Oh, I already had some on there. <laughs> I didn't look. <laughs> That'll teach me. I was prepared. How about that? Imagine that. <laughs> yep, now it's got just a little bit extra tape. All right. Shocked myself of being prepared with the tape. Usually tape is like, I always forget to put tape on to prep. Well, some reason. Well, I shouldn't say always. But most of the time. All right. Here we go. So this is going to go just kind of centered just like that. And I just want to cover that just so that when we put on our decorative cardstock, that is covered and gives us a nice finished edge there okay let me continue like this get that stuck down then i'm just gonna give this a little bend break those fibers a little bit Make sure those are down good so that they don't so they don't bubble up. All right. For our decorative cardstock, where did I put them? Right here. Okay. So I have one piece that is two and a oh, ten and a quarter by two inches that's this one here and then i covered up my decorative cardstock measurements and then this one is two and a quarter by ten and a quarter that's going to go just like that and then we have our other decorative cardstock ten and a quarter high by nine and a quarter wide and that is going to go here so let's go ahead and smudge these I just put my sponge, I got a little piece of uh, Velcro down under there, and then, uh, whoops, <laughs> I put my sponge under there for each one, just so I'm not having to go in my drawer. Oops, I got the teal on there. Let's just go ahead and smudge this edge with the marigold. It's called dried marigold. Yes, dried marigold. Okay. 
just to basically cover up any white edge that might be on there. I could probably use the walnut stain on this one too. Because that is a nice color. There we go. Good enough just to take off the white edge. I'm going to make sure we're facing up and down. All right. Oh, I did write on the back of these two. It's like two inches. All right. Oh, we're at one hour, so we'll wrap this up pretty quick here. Okay. We will wrap this up with this and then we'll next video we'll finish it up. This is the two and a quarter inch piece here. I don't know how many more little fun things I'll add to this. Let to see. We will have to see, but since it's for a child, I thought they would get a kick out of the more interactive type things. So, not that it's a, you know, not it won't be a toy, but uh, just something different for them to put their pictures in. And then this is our biggest piece. All right. and I think we will do the Z fold the next time since we're not going to have I don't want to run too much over the hour here so we'll put the Z fold build the Z fold next time All right, perfect okay Woo. there we go lovely and that gave me with the using the two pieces of this it was enough to to have my extra little pieces there so two pieces worked out perfectly for that and because I'm going to be adding added this stuff over top I didn't see any sense in um, using from the main papers there we go all right, so that is our book for today. So if you're a subscriber, thank you so much. As always, I do appreciate you um, subscribing to my channel, and I hope you continue to follow along and share my uh, tutorials with other people. All you have to do is hit share in the selections down below the video, and it'll bring up a, a variety of different options where you can share uh, Facebook and Pinterest and um, I really appreciate if you share the videos. Thumbs up is always appreciated and if you're not a subscriber I hope you do so at this time. Go ahead and hit that red subscribe button down in the right hand corner. When the bell pops up go ahead and hit that bell and you'll be notified each time I load up a new video and as always I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.